This is a lesson on the units of measurement that we're going to use in physics. So the reason we focus on this um, is because when scientists are trying to communicate with each other, it makes everything so much easier if they have a common reference to compare their measurements with. The classic example that everybody talks about these days is the Mars Orbiter. Uh, millions of dollars, lots of scientific work. This satellite was sent up to explore Mars. And unfortunately, one person was talking in feet, one person was talking in meters, and uh, missed Mars, cost millions and millions of dollars, total waste. So, to get a uh, common language for measurement, scientists use the metric system. A little bit of history on the metric system here. Um, it was first adopted in France. France was the first country to adopt it officially. They adopted it in 1791. It was actually... Um, worked on for almost 100 years before that, but uh, in 1791 uh, it was adopted thanks largely to the work of this gentleman here. This is Lavoisier, you probably um, have seen him in your chemistry classes. Um, he was actually also very involved in the mathematics and also uh, in developing the metric system. Now unfortunately, um, in order to finance his, his passion for the metric system, he actually became a tax collector, and he did that at the worst possible time, so that when the French Revolution showed up, um, they decided to cut off his head. So um, he was one of the first pioneers, but uh, had a violent end. So uh, for a couple hundred years, the metric system um, was developed. It tended to fragment. There was a lot of different um, views of the metric system. In the 1960s, they reformalized it um, and renamed it as the Système International, or the SI system. So the SI system is now accepted everywhere in the world, except for three countries. Those three countries are Burma, Liberia, and you guessed it, the United States of America. Everywhere else in the world has agreed that um, we should probably speak the same language when it comes to science, not those three countries. So, the SI system recognizes seven fundamental or base units. For length, they talk about the meter. For mass, they talk about the kilogram. For time, they talk about the second. For current, there's the ampere. Um, for temperature, there's the Kelvin. Uh, for luminosity, there's the candela. And uh, for amount of a substance, there's the mole. So these are the seven uh, base fundamental units of the metric system. We call these the fundamental units because these are all units that we can observe directly. You can actually go out and measure uh, one meter. Actually, of all of these units, though, there's only one that we actually have a standard um, icon that we use um, to base all of the other measures off, and that's the kilogram. There is actually a, it's made out of platinum iridium, there is actually a solid kilogram and that's kept in a, in a safe in France, and all of the other kilograms in the world are based off of that one. All of the other units are, are now um, described in terms of other things. So from that point of view, all of these other units are less fundamental than they used to be. For example, they used to actually have a meter that you could go and um, measure your, your length according to that, that standard meter scale. Now they actually use the speed of light and time to figure out what a meter is. So you can make the argument that a meter is no longer fundamental. But according to the SI system, it still is. There's also uh, 20 derived units. Some of the most famous ones are the Hertz, the Joule, the Ohm, and the Coulomb. Um, these are, are called derived units because we can only talk about them in terms of one of the fundamentals. For example, a Hertz is a measure of frequency, which is a measurement of how uh, many times something happens in a second. So you can't know what a Hertz is unless you know what a second is. A joule is a measure of energy, which is a measurement of 
um, uh, and you can do it in terms of how much force there is on something over a distance. So you can't know what a joule is, you can't observe a joule unless you can measure a meter um, and measure some mass and acceleration. Um, same thing with the rest of them. So um, they're called derived because we can't actually measure them uh, directly. We have to measure a fundamental and use those fundamental measurements to figure out what these derived units are. Um, now, on top of those uh, basic or derived SI units, we often put prefixes. Um, if we want to talk about uh, 10 in front of it, we call that a deca. So if you have a deca meter, that means you've got 10 meters. Um, for 100 meters, we'd say a hectometer, hectometer. For 1,000 kilo, for a million mega, for a billion giga. Going the other way, if we want to get smaller, if we have one tenth of a meter, we have a decimeter. One hundredth, we have a centi. One one thousandth, we've got a milli. One one uh, one one millionth, a micro. And just to point it out, um, the the symbol for micro is the Greek mu. It uh, looks kind of like a cursive M. And one billionth is a nano, with a little n. So that saves us having to write lots and lots of zeros after our measurements. If, if we have um, 9 billion uh, meters, we could just write 9 gigameters. Now, often what we want to do with our units is convert them. Um, the first type of uh, unit conversion, for example, within SI, um, let's say that we wanted to convert 500 kilometers into centimeters. So the first thing we do is we want to get rid of the unwanted prefix. We want to get rid of that five that kilometers. So we take our original 500 kilometers and we multiply it by a fraction with kilometers on the bottom. We're going to replace uh, the kilometers with the original base. Now you have to ask yourself, okay, how many meters go in a kilometer? Well, by definition, there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. And if we multiply it by this fraction, this is essentially one over one, because there's one thousand meters in one kilometer. So we've now multiplied our 500 kilometers by one. But the cool thing about this is it allows us to cross off the kilometers. So in our first step, we now have 500,000 meters. The second step is to replace um, the base with your desired prefix. So we take our 500,000 meters. Again, we multiply it by a fraction. We want to get rid of the meters and replace it with centimeters. That way the meters will cancel out. But of course, to make this um, mathematically viable, this fraction has to be 1. So we have 100 centimeters in 1 meter. So our final answer is going to be um, 5 0 0 0 0 0 0 0. And if we want to figure out what that is, we've got um, 50 million um, centimeters. Okay, so that's the um, relatively straightforward unit conversion. If we want to convert between systems, for example, if we want to convert 42 inches into centimeters, we do a very similar thing. We take our initial uh, measurement, we multiply it by a fraction where the unwanted is on the bottom, and the desired one is on top. But the key is we need to know how many centimeters there are per inch. Just by looking at a ruler, um, you can see that there's 30 centimeters in 12 inches. So this winds up being 42 times 30 divided by 12. Uh, which comes out to 105.
centimeters. So their inches canceled off. Okay, so that's just the basics of the SI system and a little bit of simple uh, unit conversion. Hope that's helpful, and we'll see you next lesson.